Joining us now for some political analysis are Jamal Simmons, a host on Hill TV and a Democratic strategist, and Selena Zito, columnist for The Washington Examiner. Good to have both of you here. You've been spending a lot of time in South Carolina uh, yes. this past week. Um, it's early days, but we know polling continues to show Senator Biden or Senator Vice President uh, Biden. Senator Vice President, President. is you know, name the title. He told me uh, Well, exactly. He's been around a while, uh, yeah. which may be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you talk to. But, uh, Selena, is it a good thing or a bad thing for the Democrats you spoke to? I mean, what are you hearing about Biden when you were talking to people in South Carolina? The most interesting thing I heard from Democrats in South Carolina, and I was all over the state, was that they don't necessarily need to fall in love this time. They just need to coalesce around someone whom they believe they could win. In my interviews, Biden still was definitely the favorite um, among suburban men, among white men, among African Americans. Suburban women, though, I saw an uptick for uh, Senator Warren. Um, a lot of suburban women found her message compelling and thought of her as a fighter. So that was sort of my overview of what I, of what I heard. But I, the, the thing I consistently heard is, we're just, whoever it's going to be, whoever we think is going to win, we're going to go behind that person because we ultimately want someone who can beat Donald Trump. Do you agree with that? Uh, I heard a little bit more, um, people are asking a lot of questions. So Vice President Biden is certainly somebody who everyone's very fond of. He seemed like he was everyone's first choice about what they hoped would occur. I also heard people saying they wanted to see more of him. It felt like he hadn't been down there enough. Uh, you heard people talk not about- Not enough retail. Not politics. enough retail. He just hadn't been in the state. They hadn't seen him and touched him and you couldn't just do it as a surrogate. I heard a lot of good things about Cory Booker. A lot of good things about his team on the ground, that he's showing up all the time. And South Carolina is one of those states where they want to do a scratch and sniff. They want to see what you're <laughs> really like, uh, not just let other people uh, speak for you. So there was a lot of coverage, certainly, and controversy. We heard from other candidates criticism of Joe Biden's remarks uh, this past week uh, regarding past work with segregationists. Is that something that matters in the news cycle, but also matters to voters, or were they kind of oblivious to it? So uh, this, at that point when I was there, this wasn't as big of a deal. I've heard a lot about it since uh, the beginning of, since the end of last week, beginning of this week. Um, and so here's the question that I've heard. Uh, you know, when Fannie Lou Hamer said that she was sick and tired of being sick and tired, she was talking about Jim Eastland and the Democratic Party in Mississippi. And so for Joe Biden to kind of reflect on that with fondness is what people didn't like. Listen, African Americans understand about working with people who are segregationists or else they wouldn't be here anymore. Uh, but this idea that Joe Biden looked back at this era as something that was fond, was something that seemed to strike the chord of particularly a couple of older folks that I've talked to this week. Yeah, my experience, I, I, I was down there just as this came out. It hadn't really penetrated the electorate yet. Um, and they, they tend to view things from their perspective, what they're experiencing. And sometimes the, the national news doesn't always hit them. And it takes a couple weeks before they start to really discuss whether this is a problem on or not. On the local level. Right, on the, very, on the most granular level, yeah, for sure. So what was resonating? What are people looking for in these candidates? You said not necessarily to fall in love, but what do they want? They want to win, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, th that, is, th that is the utmost importance, is that they want to win. The danger for a candidate is that uh, when you are the candidate everyone thinks is going to win, the minute somebody else looks like they're right. going to win, you can see people shift very quickly Whack from one of the other candidates. Right? Yeah. People rise, people fall. And it, in, yeah. the la in the last election where we had a Republican incumbent where Democrats were running in 2004, we saw this. People went from Joe Lieberman to John Edwards to John Kerry to Wesley Clark to back to John Kerry. It all moved around a lot. So I think candidates, this is a long way. We even, haven't even had the very first debate question yet. A long way to people making final decisions. And you're, you're setting us up for this week with the first round of debates. What about the two candidates we heard from on the program today? How are Senators Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris doing in South Carolina? Um, Kamala Harris is struggling right now. Um, she really hasn't resonated yet with the voters, even though I think she spent a decent amount of time down there, uh, along with Cory Booker. Uh, that doesn't, I wouldn't mean that discounts her. Uh, I just, she hasn't resonated yet. I do think that the debates are going to be something that, uh, that sort of um, elevate some and then others start to fall, fall down. Uh, Bernie Sanders has always maintained his core supporters. And his core supporters, like Trump 
supporters. They don't move away from him. Even to the Senator Warren? Uh, the, well, they might. It I think, again, I think it depends on, on, on who, who has the most presidential timber in the debate, who sort of stands out and, and seems as though they can bring not just their supporters there, but also broaden their uh, appeal to other voters. Kamala Harris was, uh, I think she had really good performances this week, uh, this week at the Fish Fry and then at the South Carolina dinner last night. I hear a lot of people saying on Twitter and people I've talked to, I trust, Bakari Sellers, they really are very happy about Kamala Harris's performance. Um, with Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg has a line about Joe Biden that he wants to take us back to the 20 teens. Bernie Sanders kind of wants to take us back to the 19 teens, a little bit like Eugene Debs running for president as a socialist again. Uh, and I don't know that that's going to help him with the older voters who are the ones that he needs to grow with. He's already good with the young folks. The question is older voters who actually know what socialism is, mm -hmm. is talking about socialism the way to get them to come over to Bernie Sanders. I just don't see it. Selena, you also, of course, are tracking President Trump's reelection bid here. Did this stand off? stand down with Iran and on the migrants affect him? Will that? Is that part of a strategy? Uh, I don't think it impacts him, and here's why. Uh, a lot of this new coalition, this sort of conservative populist coalition, has less about having hawks in it and more about people, or I, I don't know if you call them doves, but people that were very fed up with the establishment in the Republican Party, uh, that, that, er that everything sort of, in their minds, led to war or led to confrontation. Mm -hmm. and, and so among his base, for the majority of his base, this was a good move for him. Um, I, I also, on, on his base, I think it's really, really important uh, that something gets done on the border because okay. those images are just inhumane. We'll be right back.